we're back here at the corner store today um, for for the people campaign with Miss yeah. Renita Green. Hi y'all. Yes, I'm so excited uh, to be on her team. I met her at my play about six months ago. About six months ago, but um, her friends that go to her church, I've known them for some years, and then she married one of my cousins, and so I brought her name up to my mother, and my mother was like, yes, fabulous person. Who was your cousin? Renato Bornett. Oh, I didn't know Renato was your cousin. Yeah, first cousin. Oh, really? Yes, so all nice. of them have just told me how wonderful you are, so I just continue nice. to hear such nice things about this lady. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and who'd have thought we just met at a restaurant, and you know, That's right. we we hit it off and I'm here on her team and helping with community building. Yeah. 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 So um, I love your hustle. Okay. Like I've been following you probably before you knew I existed. I knew you existed. Right. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate, I have so much respect for the grind. I mean, like nobody gives us anything in this world. We have to go out there and work our butts off. What you put on there today about having to yeah, work, work hard. Yeah, work most. That's right. That's we just right. got to deal with just it. Just got to deal with it. Deal with the blues. <laughs> yeah. But you know, enough about me, enough about me. I'm always talking about me, Miss Blue. <laughs> We're going to talk more about Miss Renita today and um, what we got going on in Cape Girardeau, what she has going on, and what I really want to emphasize today is that Renita has always been for the people. Thank you. Yeah. So, let's just tell them a little bit about you, where you're from, right. how long you've been here in Cape Girardeau. Do I look at the camera? Do I look at you? Look at the camera. What did I do? Okay, Be pretty hi. to the camera. <laughs> I'm not very comfortable with this. Okay, so here we go. Um, I was raised in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, moved to St. Louis in about 2000, right at the end of 2000. Um, I pastor St. James AME Church here in Cape Girardeau. I've pastored in an AME church for um, 18 years. 18 years? Yeah. Yeah, 2000, 2000, about, yeah, 18. Wow, it's been a long wow. time. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I started off in a little country church that didn't even have indoor plumbing. That's we had to go down the uh, the gravel road to get to the dirt road to get to the church. That's how in the literally in the middle of a cow pasture. Right. Um, and then I was in St. Charles for 11 years, and then three years ago was moved here to Cape Girardeau. Moved to Cape Girardeau. Mm -hmm. So um, I work as a property manager. I also am an adjunct professor at SEMO. I teach religions of the world. Okay. Um, have two pretty spectacular kids, grown kids. They're 29, 30. Uh -huh. Can y'all believe 30. that? 29 and 30. I have a grandbaby. I'm a grandmother. I am a grandmother. <laughs> I'm a grandmama. <laughs> they call me grandma. Yeah. So because I'm his white grandma. White grandma. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, and so that's, you know, like that's, I don't know what else do you want to know. That's your background. Yeah. Um, so you heard um, she's been a pastor for, since, for 18 years. Um, she started off at a small church. You know, this just shows you that when someone is for the people, they don't mind being at the lowest of the low. You know what yeah. I mean? They've been there and they, they're willing to, you know, walk along with everybody to help every. One thing that Renita told me that I really love is she says, um, we got to go up together. Right. I think that is something that just has really stuck with me that she says we got to all go up together. Right. So she's willing to help pull us all up. We pull and each we, other up. Yeah, yeah. We pull each other up. And you know, we need that. You, you know, there are so many people, you know, I don't have a job. I can't do this. That we, yeah. She's here helping, working for you guys here in Cape Girardeau. You need to get out and vote because she's doing it. So, yeah. Her, for the People campaign has a lot coming up. Uh, we, you're really in like the preliminary time now until right. August. Uh, really getting to know the people, getting out right. here, doing things. One event um, we have coming up is June the 15th. It's 
gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. We're having a spoken word for the people event. Poetry for the people Poetry event. Poetry for the people. We have a hot lineup. Uh, it was easy to get a great lineup because so many people love this woman. Thank y'all. They can't wait Thank to come do poetry for her campaign. Thank um, so we have Stephanie Fraction. Stephanie. She's from Cape Girardeau. Stephanie Fraction was also a part of uh, my, I'm Miss Jerry Locke, my plays. Uh, amazing talent, singer and poet. She may sing for us too. Yeah. We have Chastity Davis, who is a dancer and a poet. Thank you, Chastity. Yeah, she's going to be performing. We have Stephen Tarver, the king of poetry. He's going to be performing. He's from Cairo, Illinois, and also a part of my cast. We have Thanks, Michael Steve. Cancel from here in Cape Girardeau. Mark. He's going to perform. This man is spectacular. He is spectacular. The yes. Navigator. The that's, Navigator. That's his name. The yes, Navigator. The Navigator. Yes. And then you have me, Miss Jerry Lott. Nice. I will be performing also. Um, I'm, you're on with Blue. I'm doing something every week, so who knows what's going to happen with me. You may get all kind of entertainment, but just know it's going to be a great Thing for the people. Yeah. You're gonna hear from Renita. Come meet her. Okay. Tickets are only ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah. So and you're supporting. So just Appreciate come it. on out and get your tickets. Get them from Renita. Yeah. Uh, get on Facebook. Um, look up Renita. Look up Jerry Lott. Yeah. Michelle. Michelle Jackson. Jackson. Leslie Washington. Also, will have tickets. Um, will the corner store have tickets? We can leave some tickets we can, here. Yeah, at the corner store. Corner or store. you can go to 12shadesofblue.com. T-W-E-L-V-E-S. Blue.com. Yes. So, can I say something right here? Yes. This time. Come on. So, really, um, what's essential is that if you live in the 147th district, well, no matter where you live, registering to vote is so essential. So, what they will try to make us believe is that if you have a felony conviction, you cannot read cannot vote. That is not true. You can vote if you are off papers. So if you have served your time and your probation is done, there is a form that the probation officer is supposed to have given you to send to the county clerk's office so that you can register to vote. If you have moved since the last time you voted, you need to update your registration. If you have changed your name, got married or divorced, or just changed your name, right. um, you need to re you need to um, update your voter registration. Right. We don't want to give them any reason to disenfranchise us at the polls. Okay. We want every vote to count. In this county, in this community, in the District 147, um, only 40 percent of the people voted in 2016. 40 percent. 40. Y'all, that's 41 percent. Oh my gosh, that is too big. That means the majority did not vote the right. majority right that means we got to get out there we've and got vote. to vote we've got to vote at, are you happy i will concede that at a federal level like with the electoral college that maybe our voice our votes don't have the influence we would want it to have right it, you know we influence the popular vote because but we don't so many because the electoral yeah. college does but at the local level mm -hmm. though every Same vote point. counts yes. every vote counts at the local level now you can be assured that our counterpart, the, the, the incumbent, those who want to maintain that supermajority mm -hmm. in um, Jefferson City. So right now it's like, so it's heavily weighed. So it's mostly Republicans in Jefferson City, not very many Democrats and even fewer independents. And so what happens is that laws are made that impact us, that are made by people who do not live with us and are not in community with us. And so like what this year, one of the important things that happened was a change in what is considered um, an assault against an officer. So um, I was arrested for third degree assault against an officer during the Ferguson uprising, right. right? But I didn't touch anybody. They pulled me through the line, threw me down on the ground, and, and, you and were charged me right. with third degree assault. Now it was, you know, thrown out or whatever, mm -hmm. but that was a misdemeanor in 2014. Now it would be a felony, even though I didn't touch them. It would right. be a felony. And that's that's one of the laws that have has passed that um, impact us 
uh, our community in particular. Yes. So we really need to be aware of how um, those that we vote for or don't vote for, because if you don't vote for me, you are voting for whoever wins. Right. You, if you don't vote, you have voted for the winner. Right. And um, right, our schools in District 147, our teachers make an average of like $8,000 a year less than teachers in comparable cities. Right. Like we need to do more. Um, our poverty rate in Missouri is among the highest in the nation. And what we consider to be poverty, I mean, can you believe that they want us to believe that $7.85 is a generous wage to live off of? Because the federal minimum wage is $7.50 an hour, Missouri is $7.85 an hour. There's an initiative now called Raise Up Missouri that would take us to eight sixty an hour and then raise us $0.85 cents an hour until we get to twelve sixty. But the federal poverty, like the poverty index is like 16000 a year. It's like $10 an hour. You're in poverty. And they want us to just to keep living at $7.85 an hour. Right. And talk to us like we're crazy because, you know, we can't live off $7.85 an hour. Right. Um, so that's one of the measures that will be on our ballot. Another measure that we need to be aware of is the right to work, which that bill title is a misnomer. So I'm really... Um, encouraging us to get out in August and vote no on Prop A. What okay. Prop A will do is basically dismantle unions as we know it. Now, unions have a lot of work to do. Like okay. they, they really need to restructure and, and be more relevant for today's workforce. Okay. But without unions, do you know that unions are the reason why we have a 40 hour work week? Unions are the reason why we get overtime pay after 40 hours. Mm -hmm. Unions are the reason why there's health care benefits, child care benefits, mm -hmm. like all of this safe workplaces, all of that is because, because the unions union. have fought for workers' rights. Okay. Okay. So we cannot let them take away the one organization that fights for our rights as right. workers. Right. As, as, they, as it is, they would have us broke down, worn out, can't do nothing, can't buy nothing, can't go nowhere. They want to keep us at a subclass. Right. And so we have to resist. We yes. have to keep resisting. And the way we resist is to get out and vote. But we can't vote if we're not registered. So if you're not registered to vote, you can go to the Missouri it's at Secretary of State's website, but you can also go to my website, renitaforthepeople.com. There is a link on my website where you can check your voter registration. You can see where you are supposed to vote. You can make sure your voter registration is active and you can even register to vote if you need to register to vote. It's so important. Oh my gosh. And this is why you need to vote for me because right. this is what listen. I'm going to bring to Jefferson yeah. City. <laughs> I mean, listen to this woman. She has just broken down everything for you. I mean, she's told you guys everything. Basically, um, if you're not registered to vote, uh, go vote why they may tell you you can't get registered to vote but you can if you you're serve your time you off papers you can vote if you've changed your name make sure you go get and if you don't vote you're voting for the other person please if you don't vote for her you're voting for the other person and you don't know what you're voting for voting you don't know your you're voting yourself yeah against your own self-interest you're voting against minimum wage going up. You're voting against unions that's helping people get the amount of hours they need to work. Y'all know that these hard working places will have you work 34 hours and you gotta have 37 to be full time right. to get benefits. Yeah, I know, uh -huh. they do that type of stuff. They do, and they will only let you work through a temporary service and then yes. lay you off before you have, right, when you, can right get, when you have enough time yeah. in to become a regular employee, they will lay you off make you go work for another temp service and just keep us in this predatory cycle of yes. we have to resist. Got, we, we have, have to, resist. to resist. And I will assure you there aren't many people who are moving politics and moving um, policy who are talking like this in our area. And so right, right now um, the Republican um, bank, if you will, the candidate uh, the last we looked, and all this is public online, like they had $87,000 that they're starting with. Yeah. Like we, 
We got like hugs. Thank you, girl. Mm -hmm. Thanks for helping. So, <laughs> you know? We just want y'all to come so get a $10 you. ticket. We need you to help because, you know, things like I need real signs like this yeah. is great. But, you know, we need real signs that will go in people's yards. We yeah. need those flyers that I'm going to be able to take door to door when I go talking to people about, you know, how we move Missouri forward, how we move District 147 forward. Um, we need... Um, to have the exposure. How did the, um, I, we went and we, I had the pleasure of helping with the labels on the water oh, that bottles. that was fun. Um, yeah. Renita had all these water bottles. 250. 200 to give out to. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow, so is, tomorrow the is the Mother's March. the Mother's March. Against violence and can I, so can I plug I here? I need you to plug so, here. Right, Tell us about it. I am the Gun Sense candidate. Um, I received the, in, um, it's not an endorsement, it's called a distinction. I um, received Gun Sense candidate distinction um, from Moms Demand Action Against Gun Violence. Um, so as a gun sense candidate, um, I'm not looking to take away everybody's guns or do away with the Second Amendment, but mm -hmm. to create safer areas and greater sense of safety for, for those of us who are, are impacted by gun right. violence. Right. Um, so um, tomorrow is the annual march, SNAP, um, Stop Needless Acts of Violence, please, Felisa, mm -hmm. uh, Felice Roberson. And we stop at different locations where a person has been murdered over the last few years mm -hmm. in South Cape. So we'll start at Indian Park at 8.30 in the morning. We end at Rainy Park at about 11 a.m. Okay. And then there'll be some speakers. I'll be one of the speakers tomorrow. Okay. If we're on time, I have to be at a funeral at noon. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully we'll be on time. But we'll be passing out water, our water yeah. at there. And we'll also have voter registration available at the march. One thing I want um, to, for Ms. Renita to tell you guys too, she was saying how she would go to certain events and um, where she would be asked to pray. And sometimes she, you know, people were looking like, are you just coming to do this because you're running for office? But Renita, tell them how she's always, I thought that was just fabulous. She's always been there. She's been there for the people I all am the people. Time. She's the people. She's been there. She's all, always there. She's there at the events. You know? There. So now because she's running to. for office because we need someone like her yeah. to be for, for us all the people. So as a pastor, like, I live life with regular everyday people. I see the impact. You know, I, I've held a mother when her five-year-old shot the two-year-old because the gun was left laying out. Um, I've held teenagers whose friend committed suicide with a shotgun. You know, I've, I've held mothers whose child was taken away yeah. from gun violence. Like this yeah. has been, you know, like this is real stuff. You know, I, yeah. I, I have listened as people lament about how they can't access health care. Um, the last conversation I had, a woman is a retired educator, her husband is a retired professional, but they're caught up in this when they call the donut hole. And they have to choose either what's his medication or her medication, and they had to figure out who would be harmed less by not having the proper medication. So, yeah, wow. I don't have health care insurance. You know, like, I, I'm not, I don't work a full-time job. You know, the church right. doesn't pay that, right. you know. So, you know, being uninsured makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about mental health care, you know, I, I know. I mean, I'm just talking about, like, you know, people who get arrested for weed. Like, mm -hmm. I've, sat across, I've sat across the glass, you know, mm -hmm. talking to people on the phone, visiting the jail. I'm tired of visiting people in jail who have been arrested for nonsense and for weed and, you know, when when this natural remedy to many health care, depression, anxiety, you know, we can't access health care, but yet you don't want us to smoke weed, right. but you don't want us to commit crimes. Right. I mean, come on. I mean, right. it's like, where do people get a break? Where do they get a break? And because right. I am living real life with people, you know, I see the challenges of paying rent and of child care, of transportation. You know, like, it, this is real stuff. Mm -hmm. But people who haven't experienced these difficulties themselves 
and aren't in relationship with people who experience no it just is like you need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps you need to get another job you need to you know save your money you need to spend more wisely you need to stop wasting your money stop shopping you know like they have these yeah. impressions that we live such lavish lives while they're paying our way with their tax dollars right. and you know we're That's slaving away true. working at slave wages right. and they don't care you know it's like there's just such a disconnect 